shall hinder me to wail and weep, to chide my fortune and torment myself. What means this scene of rude impatience? Edward, my lord, your son, our king, is dead. I bewept a worthy husband's death and lived by looking on his images. And now two mirrors of his princely semblance are cracked in pieces by malignant death, and I for comfort have but one false glass, which grieves me when I see my shame in him. Thou art a widow, and thou art a mother, and hast the comfort of thy children left thee? Death hath snatched my husband from mine arms and plucked two crutches from my feeble limbs, Edward and Clarence. Give me no help in lamentation, I am not barren to bring forth complaints for my husband, for my dear Lord Edward. Sister, sister, I think you like a careful mother of the young prince, your son. Send for him and let him be crowned. Drown your desperate sorrows in dead Edward's grave and, and plant your joys in living Edward's throne. Madam, have comfort. All of us have cause to wail the dimming of our shining star. But none can cure their harms by wailing them. Madam, my mother, I cry your mercy, I did not see your grace. Humbly on my knee, I crave your blessing. God bless thee, and put meekness in thy mind, love, obedience, and true duty. Amen, and make me die a good old man. That is the butt end of a mother's blessing. I marvel why her grace did leave it out. Though we have spent the harvest of this king, we are to reap the harvest of his son. Me seemeth good that, with some little train, forthwith from Ludlow, the young prince be fetched hither to London to be crowned our king. Why with some little train, my lord? Why? Oh, marry, my lord, lest by a multitude the new healed wounds of malice should break out. I hope the king has made peace with all of us, and the compact is firm and true in me. And in me, and so I think it all. And yet, since it is but green, therefore I say with noble Buckingham that it is meet so few should fetch the prince. And so say I. Then be it so. And go we to determine who straight shall post to Ludlow. Madam, and you, my mother, will you go to give your censures in this weighty business? All our hearts. My lord, whoever journeys to the prince, for God's sake, let not us two be behind. For, by the way, <coughs> also an occasion as indexed to the story we lay talked of, to part the queen's proud kindred from the king. My other self, my counsel's counsel story, my oracle, my prophet. My dear cousin, towards Ludlow then, for we'll not stay behind. <laughs> <laughs> 